much. I, I want to introduce someone Tim earlier had introduced to uh, to all of you. Uh, I've got a number of my colleagues who'd still like to say a few words, uh, but uh, we do have with us Anthony McDonald, and Anthony is going to be our flag bearer in Guelph in the next election. And you may know him because he's one of you. The difference between us and the Liberals is we talk to everyday hard-working Ontarians and I'd like to invite him to come up and say a few words to all of you. Go Anthony! Go Anthony! Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. This is my wife, Amy. My daughter, Ava. This is what horse racing looks like. Not just in this riding, or any riding, Guelph or otherwise. Not in Ontario, not in just Canada. This is how it looks in the world. Normal everyday people. I would like to thank Lisa for not only inviting me to speak, but mostly the call for an independent review of this debacle. I fully support you and I know everyone else here does also. As I said, I was very happy to be invited here and all at the same time angry that I needed to be here. Upset and frustrated with this government, just like you. We all find ourselves in a fight, a fight for our lives, our families' lives, and truthfully the lives of thousands of horses also. We all know who the aggressors are. I thought, as you did, it was a weak and financially strained government. A government too lazy to look before it leaped. But now that we are months and months into this fight, I see, as you should too, it's a disgraceful greed of a few that has driven the many. There are people in our province, very wealthy, very powerful people, whose greed and total disregard for the everyday working man and woman, like you, like me, like them, that help nudge our fiscally irresponsible government down this disastrous path. The people with the most to gain haven't made the front page of any newspapers, any tabloids, or the six o'clock news. These people back the liberals, and now the liberals are backing them. We have all heard horse racing or health care. It's been deba debated in that very building. There couldn't be any more of a foolish statement. One has helped fund the other for over 10 years now. But should we really be shocked? This government has never helped out the everyday Joe. Joe has been on his own now for a long time, nine years or so. Joe's silence has been the liberal strength, but that all ends today. The liberals fully expected us to lay down, say nothing, shocked and stunned while they scurried away with our portion of the money for the SAR program, the money we race for, the money we feed our children with, the money that helped fund education, and yes, helped fund health care. What the, little, the Liberals didn't expect was that the Ontario people, our neighbours, the average Joes, would see through the lies, the corruption, and be able to stop and understand for themselves what was happening here. By now you have all read the report by the horse racing transition panel that was two years too late, far too negative, and far too liberal. We have all seen the comments from the all too absent Ted McMeekin. His opening statement reads, the panel concluded that the government made the right decision to end the slots at racetracks program. A program that cost, cost the taxpayers of Ontario $345 million last year. Going as far as to say reinstating the SAR program would be poor public policy. Yeah. 
Perhaps Mr. McMeegan should have read the rest of the report. It also said the horse at horse racing, the breeding industry is worth saving. The industry is a value contributor to Ontario's economy. The industry is worthy of government investment, and the industry is a valuable social, cultural, and community asset. The report said something else that, re that resonates with all of us. Without horse racing in Ontario, thousands and thousands of people and horses are in dire straits. Horses that have bought our firms, put our children through schools, paid for trucks and trailers, employed countless veterinarians, grooms and blacksmiths. Horses that have put over a billion dollars into the provincial government's pockets. But wait, now Mr. McMeekin has changed his tune. Now he's saying, as recently as Monday, it was never this government's intention to crumble the industry. Really, are you sure about that? We may also, well, well, we may as well all just go home if they don't want to crumble the industry. What are we all doing here today? Because they want to help us. Listen, we cannot trust this government. No. Not with our tax dollars, not with our livelihoods, and certainly not with our horses. No, sir. Where is the accountability of these people? Where is the accountability for our government? As a citizen, I am infuriated with the careless behavior, behavior and financial irresponsibility of my government. I have news for all of you. We are the government. Democracy gives us all a great power, the power to elect and the power to reject any government, including this one. Even this government is for the people, elected by the people, and most importantly, accountable to the people. When a government turns on the citizens, it's the people, they had the responsibility to replace it. That's why I'm here, and that's why you're here. As many of you know, I fully intend to run for the PC party in the riding of Guelph in the next election. An election that may be closer in the calendar than we all think. I would like to ask just one favor from the Liberals. Only one. When you are still a minority government after September 6th, and the opposition finally forces an election, the day following that election, you will hang your head, and you will feel like all of us do right now. Do me a favor. Do my wife and my daughter a favor. Do all of us a favor. Don't let the door hit you on the way out.